Today we're going to be looking at SQL Diagnostic Manager and more specifically the capabilities that Diagnostic Manager has in the area of script scripting or management of the tool through PowerShell commands. Um, so first of all we need to log into the server where the PowerShell snap in for SQL Diagnostic Manager resides and that's going to be the server where your SQL Diagnostic Manager management service resides. So I have already brought up that server and so what I'm going to do is open up PowerShell. Down here at the bottom we have the PowerShell uh, button that we can click on which will bring up the little window and a couple things we're going to do in preparation. First we need to add the PowerShell snap in for SQL Diagnostic Manager. Then we need to establish kind of a workspace or what we call a drive location for where we can execute the little commandlets from. And then we can actually perform the management uh, of SQL Diagnostic Manager. And that management will include features such as adding instances, removing instances, adding users, setting uh, instance properties and, and configurations and even establishing maintenance mode. So that's what we're going to do today is just kind of step through a couple of the commands here. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is add the snap in for SQL Diagnostic Manager. So what we will do is type in add ps snap in for PowerShell snap in and the name of the snap in is going to be SQL DM snap in just like that. Hit enter and we should see it go to the next line Next, we need to build a workspace, um, or what we call the drive for this snap-in. So I'm going to type in now, new SQL DM drive. We're going to give it a friendly name, and I'll call the name something like SQL DM. Nice and simple. Now, the next part of this command, we need to establish what instance it's going to connect to, and the name of the SQL DM repository. And you'll hear me refer to SQL Diagnostic Manager as SQL DM for short um, today. So SQL DM repository is the typical default name of the database where the data resides, but you may have given it a different name in your environment, but I'll just go with the default today. So first the instance, and then the repository like that. So we have new SQL DM drive, the name of that drive with instance in the repository. So we hit enter and we should see that it now creates that drive location called SQL DM with the root of SQL DM colon backslash. All right, next we need to change into that directory. So let's go with a CD command, SQL DM colon backslash. All right, that's done. No errors at this point. It's gone to the second line, meaning it has accepted that command. So the next part is perhaps to get some help on what are the available commands. To do that, we can do a get help and SQL DM. This will bring up the available commandlets that are part of that PowerShell snap-in called uh, SQL DM snap in. Now you have these available commands or commandlets. Uh, if you want to go further, you can get help um, on any of these commands. Just type get help space and then the name of the commandlet. And you can even do a dash detailed if you want to get more detailed information, including some examples of syntax for the use case. I'm going to stick with two particular commands to keep our video um, kind of to the point today. I'm going to add an instance and I'm going to put an instance in maintenance mode. So um, first let's go with adding an instance. So as you can see through the list we have new, we have remove, and we have set as the beginning of some of these commands. So I'm going to go with first the new SQL DM monitor instance. So let's type that. new. SQL DM monitored instance. That's going to be the command that we call. Then we want the path. So we're going to do path. Path is going to be what is the instance that we're actually adding? What's the instance name? Um, if you expect that some of your instances that you add in this path, and it, you can add multiple instances, just make sure you have the parentheses around this uh, path. 
But if any of those instances may have an awkward naming uh, standard, then we'll put in here escape for any of those types of characters and SQL DM name. And then you can put the name of your instances, but first we put the parameter of dash name. And then we can put our instances with commas between the instances. I'm just going to add one of my instances, web SQL dev 02. Then what type of authentication? I'm going to leverage Windows authentication today because that's going to call on the, or essentially use the credentials of the SQL Diagnostic Manager Collection Service to make that connection. You could also put in uh, the, uh, basically the SQL authentication option, the dash SA, and then supply, or, you know, or whatever your uh, credentials are. When you actually put in a SQL account, it will prompt you for the password for that. But for today, we will put in Windows authentication, all one word like that. Now, hopefully we have this all correct, correctly listed. And so when I hit enter, I should see that instance added behind this, the scene here in my list of servers. It might take a moment, but we should see it. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so it displays some of the details. And then on the left-hand side, let's give it just a moment. In fact, we might even hit the refresh on the console. And there it is. So now we have officially started monitoring Web SQL Dev 02. And as you can see, it takes just a moment for it to register, but it is now plugged in at this point. So that's um, how you would add an instance. You can play around with all of these different commandlets. I'm going to do one more here. I'm going to put maybe this SP Servo 1 instance into maintenance mode. So to do that, let's go back over to PowerShell. And we're going to type in the maintenance mode. Again, if you go in and do the get help on the set SQL DM monitored instance commandlet, it will give you different options for different um, commands that you can send, different parameters that go along with that commandlet that you can send to that instance. Today, I'm just simply going to put an instance in maintenance mode. So let's go with set SQL DM monitored instance. Okay, and we'll go with the path again. And and we'll put the escape again in, just depending on what uh, types of names you have for different SQL instances. And when I say characters, like what I mean is if it's not the default instance and you have a backslash, then you might want to consider doing the escape. And we'll go with escape dash SQL DM name. Then dash name again and the name of the server, which is going to be spserve01, like that. And again, whatever additional parameters, we're going to go with maintenance mode always, which is one of the parameters that goes along with that set SQL DM monitored instance commandlet. So when I hit enter, it does its thing, and we should see over here on the left-hand side that SP Servo 1 goes into maintenance mode. That would be evident by a little gear icon that shows up on the instance. Let's see. Okay, and as you can see now, SP Servo 1 is in maintenance mode. So the way I've been interacting today with the PowerShell commandlets uh, has been through the PowerShell interface, but as you can see, this would provide an easy way to build out scripts and basically administer your deployment of Diagnostic Manager without having to actually bring up an interface, um, which would make it easier just from an automation perspective or adding many instances at the same time. That's something that you might uh, do with the PowerShell interface as well. Hopefully this video has been helpful to show you both, you know, how 
the PowerShell commandlet um, can be used, but also how it can be beneficial to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, also, you can refer to the documentation or to a sales engineer in the company to give you more information or assistance or call upon tech support for assistance as well.